Mujewale, mujewale, mujewale. My name is Bonnie Kubuka and this is the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. Welcome once again to the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. This is your boy, Bonnie Kibuka. And as I've always told you, we're going to be hosting different people to come to this podcast to share about their lives and what they do. Uh, some of these people will tell about their life stories, and some of these people would just talk about their careers. And today's guest is going to be none other than Jesse 10S, or you can call him Jesse Seka Tower by his name. So, Jesse, will you say hi to our listeners? Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to hear from you and to have you uh, listen to both of us today and we share about our stories. Yeah, now, Jesse, uh, Jesse is one of my greatest friends. And I remember how I, I, I think we became friends through Instagram at one yes. point, I think back in 2016. And we became really close friends. And I remember one of the trips I made to, to DC. DC. Yeah, yes. to come and visit you. And I actually stayed in your house and we did a bunch of things together. And yeah, that's when our friendship started, right? Yeah, yeah. that's when it started. Yeah. Um, and I believe, Jesse, you grew up in Uganda. So did I. And, but like, where in Uganda did you grow up from? Oh, I grew up uh, in, in and all around uh, Buzigam and March India. So, yeah, Gaborong, one Conge Road, so Lukulinanganda, that's my area, that's where I grew up from. One hour in yeah. Yeah, one hour in yeah. India. More ghetto. Yeah. You know, uh, nah. well, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'm familiar with all those places. I had a lot of friends who come from that area. Now, how was your life uh, back in Uganda? Just a, a little summary of how you lived life there. Okay, so... Um... My parents, my dad grew up in the same area as where I grew up, and um, my parents are pastors, so they pastor a church in the area, so it's in Kongi on Gaba Road, so I grew up mm-hmm. in March India, but then the church was in Kongi, so we used to just like, uh, you know, go to church, and then during mm-hmm. the week, go to school, and then at school, or away from, from church, I, I just played soccer with my friends, you know, soccer, football, as we call it in Uganda. <laughs> Yeah. It's like a big thing over there. So mm-hmm. it was like uh, one of my favorite things to do. And that's what I used to grow up, you know, playing with my friends or my cousins and my brother. And yeah. And yeah. yeah, I almost asked you what uh, your favorite hobby was, but I guess everybody can just guess it's soccer, right? Yeah, soccer is, uh, <laughs> it's, it's everything. <laughs> yeah, because one of the main reasons I wanted you to, to come and speak on this podcast is because of your career and knowing you as a friend, um, been following you and everything you do. Uh, you're a musician, a great musician. I really love your music. And in a little while, we're going to talk to our listeners and how people can connect with you. But, um, well, did you start your, did you start your music back in Uganda or when did you start uh, your career of music? Uh, of- First of all, thank you for liking my music. It really means a lot to me coming from you because I know you're like a big time critic when it comes to music. <laughs> the times we hang out. Yeah. Um, music, I mean, music, I grew up, I liked music, but I was never involved. Uh, I used to, you know, go with my friends to church and they would sing in the choir. I'd just go with them to the practice, but I never got involved because, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't really big into it. I mean, it's a, it's a huge testimony. Uh, mm-hmm. because uh you know when your voice is breaking as a teenager you go through like the worst time and when my voice was breaking I couldn't even complete like a full sentence Bonnie mm-hmm. I couldn't like my voice would squeak from bass to uh, to soprano you know to like you right. know all the way and it was uh we used to have a family altar in the evening at my my parents house and uh we used to, you know, sing some hymns and stuff, and they excused me from singing. They say, you know what, it's <laughs> mandatory for everybody, but you should, it's okay, you, you don't have to sing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And of course, yeah. that can be a little bit painful, you know, but mm-hmm. uh, that's when I started playing guitar. It was uh, 2013, and then uh, my family moved to America, and I moved with them in that time, and of course, when you just moved over here, you don't know people like that, so... I was mm-hmm. able to get a guitar and then just start learning stuff off YouTube. 
back and forth and uh, you know learning how to produce and by the time you visited me in 2016 is when I had actually started producing music but it was just right. for fun I had nothing out there it was uh, not even professional but I was just doing it for fun just to, you know to make it and, and, and enjoy it and um, mm-hmm. and in late 2017 a friend of mine challenged me uh, you know to 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 at least get something out there and I I went set up my YouTube and uh I set up everything to distribute music on every platform and that's kind of where I started from. Nice. Yeah, I was I was almost talking about the time when I came to visit you and you played the guitar for me and it was yeah. it was a good time like I I also wanted to learn guitar. I'm I'm the worst musician you can ever find because <laughs> I hated singing when I was young. Um I, my dad is a pastor too. Yeah. Uh, and we had a Sunday school choir, but I never wanted to sing. But my dad would force me to sing. He's like, I can't tell other family uh, church members to bring their kids when if my own can. son can only sing. Yeah, I, I feel uh, you on that. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't like that. I didn't like being forced to sing. So I hated singing. And today, I don't even have a voice to sing anything. But you know, like in school, they used to make us sing, like school choirs and stuff. So I need a little bit of that. Um, yeah, but like, what's uh, one thing you knew, you wish you knew um, earlier before you began this music career? Uh, one thing I wish I knew, I wish, I wish I knew the, the things that I know now, the people that I know now and the knowledge that I've acquired, obviously, I've, because mm-hmm. for me, it wasn't like, it wasn't like I was signed to a level, I didn't have that many connections, I was just a guy making music at home. Mm-hmm. And, and and just enjoying it. So I didn't know how to monetize, how to promote. I didn't know how to engage fans or how to build a platform online and, you know, how to reach out and network and all these contacts, you know, to get your sound out there, to even make money out of it. I was, I was just doing it for fun. And I still do it for fun. Mm-hmm. That's the main reason I do music today because I, I still enjoy it. Right. But um, right. I wish I knew and had the same connects, you know, as, ever, uh-huh. as uh-huh. you know, from the start, because it could have gone bigger. But of course, every every day is a learning process. And, uh, and that's, that's right. Yeah, uh-huh. And every day is a learning process, definitely. So I wish I knew that back then, then it would, you know, it would be bigger, but no regrets. Nonetheless, um, that's right. Yeah, no regrets. Nonetheless. So, um. Has there been any success that you know you can say like, "Oh, I'm, I'm proud of achieved this and uh, success you've achieved so far in the music career?" Yes, um, to me, I mean, everybody measures success of of different things, but to me, uh, mm-hmm. receiving just a message from someone saying, "Hey, I was going through something and right. your song touched me," that means a lot because some of the songs, especially like my first album, "Hope and Restoration," I wrote mm-hmm. that in the middle of fighting depression and trying to figure myself out in the middle of the night, so many nights I couldn't sleep. I just went and played guitar because, you know, or Mm -hmm. play piano, just, you know, just to feel okay. And music was like my only way to, to, -hmm. you know, speak out because I wasn't, I'm a really, really like a reserved person. I don't usually speak out that much. So speaking out through music and having people (laughs) tell you that they relate to it and meeting people all over the world and they you know they they like it and they sing the songs word by word and then the lord using you mm-hmm. and you find testimonies that that has been that has been my greatest success of course i've done other things like other musicians will do like yeah. uh, i've I played a few shows around the world in jamaica and uganda and in in europe as well as well in america uh, mm-hmm. but to me on those shows it's meeting the people and just saying that you've had an impact on our lives that that has been a milestone for me yeah i almost i almost asked you about uh, your trip to jamaica because i was following you and i saw you had a show back there and you've been all over the country and all over the place and i know you have a song with lavixon right yes yes we do yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Uh, I I like so far what you've achieved, and just from following you and to see somebody I know achieve all these great things, and I'm sure somebody out there will be looking at you, and from today they're gonna know 
somebody is doing music, if anybody out there is trying to do music, you can listen to your story and just get uh, encouraged from what you've gone through, right? Yeah, I, w- I would be honored mm-hmm. if, uh, if I inspired somebody, definitely, because mm-hmm. um, my, my music journey is, has been actually, like, just believing it and making it happen mm-hmm. because like I told you at one point my voice was very squeaky and uh my family would excuse me from singing and I just kept going practicing it as like just as I was playing guitar you know and one time I was like oh wow I just hit a knot you know so definitely I'd love to encourage anybody if you want something mm-hmm. pursue it with consistency you know and uh be patient and with time you perfect it and then you can always you know get fruits from it and uh and yeah, you spoke about the song with Levixen. That was a mm-hmm. shout out to Levixen, my guy. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. it was a lovely experience to make music with him, though we actually never met when we were doing the song or oh, we really? met after we had done the song. But uh, it was, he's an amazing guy. Yeah, I, I follow the Vixen on uh, my Instagram and we've been friends because he went to a school with some of my good friends and that's how we connected. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, he's, he's a great guy. Um, he is. I'll make, sure, I'll make sure he listens to this uh, episode and hear your shout out. Um, so is there any failure you would say, like something didn't go right and what did you learn from it, if there was anything? Yes, there there have been failures. To be honest, you not everything is a success. And many times when we go online and we see other mm-hmm. artists, you're o- always going to see only their highlights because nobody puts right. Nobody puts uh, everything else that happens in the in the you know behind the scenes. I mean, when you listen to a song, it's three minutes long, or but mm-hmm. it takes hours and hours, or sometimes weeks or months of making that and crafting that. So definitely i've 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 had a few failures along the way i've mm-hmm. i've uh let's say promoting music i i've mm-hmm. i've 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 tried to deal with people and since like uh promotion doing promotion in different parts of the world since i'm not meeting them in person you mm-hmm. send money and they don't do the work and i'm like i wish right. i wish i did an argument with them and then next time you learn just because someone's christian i shouldn't just trust them an argument just because mm-hmm. you're speaking just not take the word but make an agreement right. so i learned from that that was my first failure basically and then uh you know of course you do some videos and they don't come out and you've bet your money on it basically you've invested already into the project getting it that far and then you can't mm-hmm. take it no more but everything does happen for a reason you know like romans 8 28 that's says, correct so it's always a learning process and every l is a lesson so mm-hmm. yeah there have been some failures but we've learned from them Right. Yeah, I actually, before we, we leave your music, uh, one of my favorite songs on your album, FIFA 21, is Remember. I like I like that song. I think I sent you a message. There was one time I was playing your music and I was like, dude, I, I can relate to this song. Like, yeah, it was it was it was really good. And if you're listening right now, go look up Jesse 10S on Spotify and play that song. Remember, maybe he can remind you something. And at the end of the show, we're going to have just to share some of his social platform, social media platforms where you can connect with him and just show him some love and support his music. Now, I know we, you kind of hit on these things a little bit. Like, what advice would you give to somebody who is trying to pursue the similar career like you have right now? Uh, I would advise them to seek a lot of knowledge, you know, mm-hmm. uh, find out as much as you can. And mm-hmm. a lot of uh, people trying to do music, obviously, are independent. Uh, being Look at it as an advantage that make as much music as you can while you can. Because with time, you get busier and then you may get caught up. But believe in yourself and it's okay to make mistakes along the way. Because mm-hmm. uh, those mistakes are what makes you and is what you learn from. And... Um, Network as much as possible. Reach out to as many people as you can. To and ask as much people you can. Every person you meet to share your music. And one thing I want to let them know: I've I've been speaking with a few friends of mine, and it's okay if some people don't share your music. Don't take it personal. But mm-hmm. there's always someone else who's gonna like it. Sometimes it could be strangers that you don't know. But let mm-hmm. people, because most, most especially a lot of artists, when you're studying, you get frustrated that your friend's not sharing your work. But 
uh, dude, we all don't listen to the same type of music. Some people like reggae, some like hip hop. So if you're making dance and I listen to hip hop, I may not be as an enthusiast to share it. But if you put it online and it maybe do a sponsored art, there's some people who like it who are going to share it. And ask people, hey, if you don't like right. it, share it. And yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that's a good advice. And I feel like some of the lines you've hit explaining that can go beyond even music. Like when you're doing anything you're doing, just like be willing to fight through and just stick to yeah. it. And people people are not going to like, not all people are going to like what you're doing, but like you get to know that there's some people that um, are going to like it, you know? Yeah. And it's the same thing, like not everybody's going to share your music, like you said, but there will be some people who enjoy, who enjoy and it. like just keep going yeah in my last episode i took about um my dad's quotes that he shares a lot uh he told me when i was young he said nothing is impossible to a willing heart so it's like your heart is willing to go pursue something just just keep going, just keep going. And no matter oh, what wow. you come away. yeah i mean um also you've kind of talked about some of these but like what are some of the resources that have helped you to Along your journey, like along your way, what resources have you used through this career? Uh, the internet. I've used the internet. I I thank God for the internet. I don't know where, how much I would be <laughs> without the internet, especially Instagram, because it's how much you can keep track of everything. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, all these soft, different softwares uh, that, you know, that we use to upload music and you know get it everywhere mm -hmm. i mean uh, i i'm an independent artist so definitely i've not been working with a label and i've i started out using a muse uh it's a it's mm -hmm. an app uh by a swedish guy whereby you know you can upload your music to every other platform i started out with that because it was free and along the way i started discovering more and i got into distro kid which is like a good good mm -hmm. good platform for an independent artist i would recommend that if you're starting out check out as many music distribution or publishing online companies that can help you out. But DistroKid is so far is the best because they'll plug your music everywhere. And even if someone uploads your music on YouTube and they get run ads, you're still going to get paid for it, you know, in your sleep. Mm -hmm. But uh, the internet, the internet is amazing, man. Uh, a lot of people share your work that you don't even know. And, right. and when you keep, key in it is consistency so the resources if you're consistent with the internet let's say for instagram because that has been my biggest platform alongside uh youtube mm. so pushing and pushing on you know on instagram using hashtags to you know get as much attention in the instagram algorithms towards your post and then maybe doing a sponsored art here and there will will get the mm -hmm. music and get you as much visibility as there is so definitely yeah the internet yeah and that's that's something too like doing the podcast that's where i've gone like the internet and just using instagram to just promote yeah. it and i know one of the people that inspired me to start the podcast because i saw their podcast on spotify and she's a lady from uganda oh, wow. but uh she, she saw my Instagram and she was like, oh, actually, I never thought about starting an Instagram to promote my podcast. But Instagram has really been a very good resource for me to just put it out yes, there it and thanking all my friends for sharing and passing the the, the, the information to all people. Like I'm, I've, I've been talking to you off air about how far my podcast has gone to like all different countries. Like you mentioned it, like you don't even know who people, who, which people are sharing your music, but somehow your music is being heard from all over the world. Um, yeah. yeah. So the, is there a, a favorite song out of all your favorite uh, oh, songs you've done or you like them all? <laughs> Listen, I like them all. I mean, music is a journey. You may, so uh -huh. I, w I may not be able to choose which ones I don't like, but some that you listen to mm -hmm. and you're like, wow, it was nice. And then after some time, yeah. you get tired of it, obviously. And you want to listen to something right. new. <laughs> uh, but uh, I like Remember a lot, the one that you spoke about, because mm -hmm. it's like my testimony, my journey. And I know it's very similar for mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, who grew up in Uganda and you moved somewhere to a different part of the world. Or you grew up in a one part of the world, not specifically Uganda 
you know, and move to mm-hmm. another part. And it's just how God elevates you through step by step. And you look back, there's a song in Luganda that inspired me to do Remember, actually, because I was singing. Uh, yeah. You know, I you, you just look yeah, back yeah. at how far God has brought you. And the only thing you can do is just get on your knees and worship him. And that I was meditating upon that line. And I was like, actually, I started remembering my whole child. She doesn't sing, sing, but she has always had valuable opinions that... Uh, she would tell me something that I may have not noticed and I'll go back and change it. And I want to shout out my friend, Smart Keys. He's in Uganda. My my career, everything, Smart Keys has helped me through each and every step as I've been producing. Sometimes he would, he would mix and master my songs or sometimes he would even give me free beats at one point, you know. And he would, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, we started from a really, really professional relationship where I was just buying bits from him. But we became brothers and he's, he's helped me out a lot. And, you know, uh, there's too many people to mention, but a few, and then the people of of course right. who influenced me that I've listened to and I grew up listening to, but away from that, these are the people who've helped me and had an influence on my music. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's really good. Um, it's always good to thank the people that, have been supportive and encouraging and I'm sure they'll get to hear this and they'll feel yeah. happy. And it's also, it, it teaches other people to kind of like give a hand on somebody else. If somebody who produces music hears this, he'll get a hat to help somebody else who is just studying. And I like that. It's like a full circle, of just like yeah, helping one, one another. Um, yeah. Uh, we're almost to the end of the show and I have a, Two questions left for okay. you, Jesse. Um, one of it is going to be, where can our listeners uh, connect with you? Like, where can all the listeners connect with you, with your music, social media? Can you just tell them all the platforms yes, where they can my connect my music with is you? on every platform, believe me, even if, it's, uh, if the platform is in Arabic or Chinese or even the platforms in Uganda like MP3, Jaja, and uh, How It Bees. From iTunes to Spotify to Amazon Music to Tidal, it's all under the same name. And you can still find me on social media under the same name, Jesse Tenes. So it's J E S S E one zero S. Like one and zero are actually the actual digits, like, you know, the actual numbers. So, mm-hmm. you know, J E S S E one zero S. So Jesse Tenes. And on every platform from YouTube to Spotify to Instagram, and you, you know, if you if you follow me on Instagram or if you find my Instagram, message me. Let me know how you, you know, how you found out about me. I would be really, really glad to know that you found out about my music through this podcast because I'll be able to give Bonnie you feedback and let him know, hey, you know, this mm-hmm. is what's going on. <laughs> and, uh, you know, connect with me. Let's be friends uh, on every platform, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Uh, it's a, it's under the same name mm-hmm. and uh before we go to the to the to the last question because you say you had two two questions i actually want to thank you Bonnie, so much for creating this platform and for having me over and to share about my life and i've been listening to every episode and thank you for sharing about your life because i know there's so many amazing stories uh that Mm-hmm. are going to be that are going to happen because people listen to this and they were inspired you know to go for things so thank you for this platform and for the opportunity i really appreciate it yeah thank you for your time jesse you thank you for just i know you're a busy guy we tried to get this uh, episode recorded for a long time yeah. but we've been like trying to get time i couldn't find it but yeah um the last question and this is a signature question for everybody i host on mm-hmm. my podcast it's what gets you excited about life? Oh, man. <laughs> you know, it's a very short question, but very broad. Um, what gets mm-hmm. me excited about life is that each day I wake up is another opportunity to, to try mm-hmm. again, if I may have failed before, or to, you know, another opportunity to live again, to be happy again, to do the purpose that we are called for, you know. I'll, away from this nine to five life, uh, there's always a, a calling in everyone's life and this purpose uh if we haven't figured it out we're always trying to figure it out but if you figured it out just do the chance to do it again and to to be to be a blessing you know and the chance to 
be happy and to try again each and every day, you know, because so many people may not wake up, but the fact that you wake up, that gets me very excited and thankful. Nice. Yeah. Um, everybody has had the answer and that's one of my favorite answers. Like every day you get up is another blessing to just try and work hard. Um, I just say this every time I say in the last episode that I shared a quote, like every day above ground is a good day. And I'll just leave that with our listeners. We just think about it like every day above ground is a good day. And once again, Jesse, I want to thank you for your time, just sticking with me for these 30 minutes and going through your music journey. And I'm sure your story is going to bless somebody out there who is listening to it. And I want to thank all our listeners uh, for the support and the love. Make sure to go check out Jesse, Jesse 10S, like we say, J E S S E. 10s on all social media platforms listen to his music contact him tell him how you found about him i'm sure he's going to respond back to you and he'll be glad to know that you found about him through this podcast and i'll be glad too because i'll feel like i'm doing something good so jesse thank you very much thank for you your very time. much for having me over.